Welcome to Notre Dame's video. They are the gold sheet number 19 from their power ratings for the 2024 season. I am Ralph Michaels walking you through this gold sheet top 25. Thank you for tuning in. We start every video with the odds and expectations for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Their national championship odds, 25 to 1. They, of course, are an independent, so no conference odds. To make the college football playoffs, minus 165 for yes, no, plus 130. Their season wins total stands at 10. It's juiced minus 110 either way. To go undefeated, yes is plus 425, no is minus 600. And Riley Leonard, their new transfer quarterback, 25 to 1 to win the Heisman. A look back at last year. We always want to take a look back at last year to know if they overachieved and if they underachieved. So when we do our up-downs on each position, you get a true reading for the team. Stat-wise, they were number two in the country in yards per play diff at plus 2.51. Yards per game, offense and defense, number 29 and number five. Points per game, they were number seven in points per game on offense and defense, but they did play a weak schedule. They played the number 60 schedule last year. When you look at their offensive efficiency ranks, both in the top 10, so again, a very productive team. One surprising note for a Marcus Freeman coach team that was number five in yards per game and number seven in points per game defense, they were number 129 in red zone defense. We're going to go through their schedule and look at a few of those situations. They went 9-3-1 against the spread to match their 10-3 and straight-up record, and they went 9-3-1 over-under as well. Notre Dame with three losses last year, Ohio State, Louisville, and Clemson. And, folks, there's a reason they lost each of those against Ohio State. Remember, third and 19 with 15 seconds to go as Ohio State was driving. They get the first down, two incomplete passes to the one. Uh, two incomplete passes from the one, and with one second left, they run in, have that long review, and they lose on the last play of the game to the Buckeyes. Against Clemson, they lost 31-23. to They allowed a one-play, 41-yard touchdown. They, had a, they gave up an interception return for a touchdown, and in another interception, they returned it to the two-yard line and scored one play later. Again, all of those made the difference in the eight-point loss. And against Louisville, was simple. They were minus four turnovers. Such a small percentage of teams can win with a four-turnover difference, so they lose 33-13. to 13. They played Duke last year. Riley Leonard was only 12-27 in that game for 134 yards. But, again, they only won that game by 14. They scored a 31-yard touchdown with 31 seconds left. So I actually think they played better than their 10-3 and record last season. We start each team in the 2024 version with our conference cheat sheet. Since Notre Dame isn't in a conference, and it's really a relative to show you the other couple independents, I just listed our number six, our number seven, and our number eight teams so you can see where they are relative. Notre Dame a 12 in our power rating. They also return 12 starters, six on each side of the ball. Number 77 as far as returning production. While they have an experienced quarterback, again, new to the system, they do have a new OC. I consider that a big upgrade as well. And they were actually a top 10 team this year as far as recruiting. Freeman has them on a nice little run. Looking at the past starters, this is a negative because they lost seven players to the draft last year and 24 points. The previous two seasons, they only lost the combined five starters. So when you were losing two and three starters to the NFL, that type of talent, and now all of a sudden you are losing seven players, that shows you have a lot more room to make up. We'll see if that top 10 recruiting class can help them in that role. Of course, Riley Leonard here, 64% completions with a 25 ratio, and he was the number one rusher last year for Duke. I think he and Denbrook are going to be a perfect combination. 
Denbrook is their new offensive coordinator. Now, where was he the last two years? Oh, yeah, he was coaching some uh, Heisman Trophy winner down in LSU. A&M made him an offer in the offseason. He was going to get a huge raise to go in A&M. LSU said, listen, we'll give you a huge raise to stay. And then all of a sudden, Notre Dame came calling. They didn't finalize the LSU deal, and now he's the new OC. Remember, he was a coach here from 2010 to 2016, so he's very familiar with the Irish. And when Marcus Freeman was the DC at Cincinnati, Denbrook was the OC for two years. So again, the Notre Dame relationship, the Marcus Freeman relationship, has this OC now taking care of Notre Dame. You know, the defense has a lot of talent back. Their key starters are back. And I really think this is a team that can have quite a bit of a potential looking for the 2024 season. Speaking of potential, let's look at that schedule and how it plays out. You see I have four grays. That means the line has been a touchdown either way. They open against a and a very tough game. We project them to be a one-point dog. Eight-point favorite at home against Louisville. Five-point favorite at home against Florida State. And they finish at USC at minus four. Now, when I look at their schedule, the first thing that pops up is take a look at those neutrals. The first game, not truly a neutral. I give Georgia Tech a one-point home edge because that game is in the Mercedes-Benz uh, Dome. But then they also play at MetLife in New York and Yankee Stadium in New York. So it's exciting when you're a college player and you get to play at those three NFL or NFL, MLB major stadiums. It is a big bonus for those players. And I know Notre Dame does enjoy those neutral games and gets very excited for it. You look at Florida State, that's a positive situation off a of bye. Florida State has a tough schedule prior to that. and. Here's a weird thing. Well, this is the Notre Dame video. Look at when Notre Dame is playing Florida State on the 9th of November. That is actually Florida State will be finished with the ACC schedule. I hate that, but we'll talk more about that game in just one minute. Our better's edge section, just some ATS information or some data I pulled out or one bettable piece of data that I want to share with you. Before I do that, folks, if you like this video, comment on it. If you dislike this video, give us a comment. Help us become better video makers. I love all positive and negative comments. Let us know how you feel about Notre Dame. You expect them to go over their win total or under? And please give us a thumbs up. Better as Edge, I'm going to start with that Florida State game again that I talked about. Currently at DraftKings, you can bet this game. It's on November the 9th. And... Florida State is a three-and-a-half-point favorite. You, again, you look at our projections, we project Florida State to be a five-point favorite, so we're getting a point-and-a-half of value in that. We look at their schedule. This may be the easiest six-stretch, six-week stretch in all of college football. They have a bye on October 5th. They'll be a 23-point favorite against Stanford a 15-point favorite against Georgia Tech, a 29-point favorite against Navy, and then they have another bye, two byes in five weeks, and then they host Florida State. On the flip side, Florida State will be in a massive scheduling deficit. They are off a game at Duke. They play Miami of Florida, which could have huge implications on the ACC title. Then they play North Carolina, and then they go to Notre Dame. So they're playing their third road game in four weeks against a team that had two buys in the previous five weeks. Under Marcus Freeman, Notre Dame has been a moneymaker. 25-13 and 13 against the spread, 65.8%. And this actually surprised me. I don't have Notre Dame in my mind as an over team. They've gone 24-13-2. 64.9% to the under, under Freeman. They were also 9-1-1 one one against the spread with a total of 55 or higher. And final scheduling spot I want to mention, when they play at USC late in the season, USC is off their rival, UCLA. 
So very tough for USC to be playing back-to-back rivals while Notre Dame is off a game where they would have been a 22-point favorite against Virginia. We appreciate the like columns, the likes. We appreciate the comments. Thank you, and stay tuned for our number 10 Gold Sheet team.